nine signs you are being gaslighted in your relationship. Gaslighted. Gaslighted. This is Law of Attraction Secrets. Join Miracle Mentor and Alchemy Life Coach Robert Sink and prepare to be empowered. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're listening to this special Law of Attraction podcast. I am your miracle mentor, your mentor of light, Robert Zink. Feeling absolutely juiced up and jacked up today. I'm motivated. I'm excited. And we are soaring high like a big, beautiful eagle flying in the direction of your dreams and your goals. And that's, that's the most important part of that sentence that we are flying in the direction of your dreams and your goals because our channel is not just about the law of attraction, though it usually always comes back to that, but it's about personal empowerment. And it's one of the big reasons why I think if you haven't subscribed yet, you should, because we're here every day. This week, we are turning out a podcast and a video every single day. And so we're here for you to empower you and to help take your life to the next level. And that's important. Number one, signs that you're being gaslighted. And if you are being gaslighted, you're being disempowered. Okay. You are being disempowered. If you're not certain what being gaslighted is, listen to this and you'll find out if you're in a relationship that is having some challenges right now, or you're not happy in your relationship, there is a possibility that you're being gaslighted. And so I'm going to go through these nine signs, and then I'm going to give you some ideas on what you can do. If you are a victim, ah, you don't want to be a victim, do you? You're not a victim. If you are a recipient of being gaslighted. Number one, you're constantly being lied to by your partner, by your mate. I mean, it's just a constant ongoing thing. It's like, I don't know what to believe anymore because one moment she tells me this, the next moment he says that, you know, one day he says he likes uh, Chinese food. The next day he says he can't stand Chinese food. He likes Mexican food. You know, it's crazy. It just goes on and on and on and on. So if you're being lied to, and a lot of times these lies aren't, well, sometimes they are, but a lot of times they're not huge lies. They're just little lies that are all the time, all the time. And it's a sign that you're being gaslighted, that you're being manipulated, that you're being controlled to some level or extent. Number two, your partner your mate, your lover, they don't keep their word at all. They say, well, I will be home by two. And then they get home at five or six. But here's what they do. You say, well, I thought you said you'd be home by two. And then they will tell you, I don't know what you're talking about. They make you feel like you're crazy. I don't know what you're talking about. You're out of your mind. I never said I'd be home at two. I said I'd be home as soon as I could. But I never said I'd be home at two. Now, you heard clearly uh, out of your own ear that they told you they'd be here by two. But they're not. They, well, for some reason, now believe it's five or six. And that happens all the time. And it can be anything, you know. Hey, I'm going out with the boys tonight to shoot some pool. And then the next thing you find out is that they weren't with any boys. They were at a dance club. I never said I was going with the boys to shoot pool tonight. I said I was going out. I might bump into them, shoot a little pool, but I was going to go out to a dance club. Again, it's all designed to make you feel like you're insane or like you're crazy, like something's wrong with you. They constantly want you to feel guilty. They constantly want you to feel bad. 
they tell you you're not worthy. I have a client, honest to God, I mean, really, she was flirting with an old boyfriend over a text message. Her current boyfriend saw the text and broke off the relationship. And she made it clear that they had been flirting for years, that nothing happens. It's just an ongoing game they do. But he didn't buy it. So now, months and months and months later, he makes her feel unworthy. It was your fault. You did it. Had you not done this, we'd be together. Had you not done this, we'd be happy. And he makes her feel very small and insignificant. He is essentially gaslighting her. So they they tell you that you're not worthy. Oh, you need to take a deep breath right now. I am worthy. I am worthy. Don't ever, ever listen. If I catch you, <laughs> if I catch you, don't ever let anybody tell you that you are not worthy. You are a beautiful, high soaring eagle flying in the direction of your dreams and your goals. And you are worthy. You're worthy of love. You're worthy of honesty. You're worthy of trust. You're worthy of respect. I'm not saying you're perfect. I'm not saying you haven't made mistakes, but you are worthy. But they'll tell you you're not worthy. Number five, actions and words do not match. Their actions, they'll say one thing, you know, I really love you and I want a long-term permanent relationship with you. I really do. But their actions don't match. They're going out with other people. They're doing other things. They refuse to take any action in the direction of their dreams and goals, or at least what you thought were their dreams and goals, but they're not because you're being gaslighted. Number six, they use positive reinforcement to confuse you. So when everything is going bad and they're telling you how unworthy you are, then they will just shower you with positive reinforcement. And the, and the whole idea is to keep you off balance. You're busy jumping from one foot to the next, from one foot to the next, and you don't know what foot to land on. Because one moment you're getting positive reinforcement, the next moment you're being told you're unworthy or lied to. You are about to experience a miracle. Claim your free 30 minutes of miracle mentoring and alchemy life coaching. Visit www.lawofattractionsolutions.com. This is the number one podcast on personal empowerment, success, and the law of attraction. You're listening to the Miracle Mentor of Light, Robert Zink. Number seven, they accuse you of what they're doing. In other words, they are doing something that's not right. And they're accusing you of doing it. And it, it's a way of saying, well, look at if you can accuse me, I can accuse you. But you're accusing them because you know it's true. And you know it's a fact. Now, it's an old technique. It's called a turnaround technique. And basically, all they're doing is turning the, the tables on you and accusing you of the same thing, which kind of negates the whole argument. You see what I'm saying? It kind of diminishes you is what I'm trying to say. They use other people's opinions against you. They'll, they'll talk to your family. They'll talk to your friends. They'll call your, your parents. They'll talk to your brother. They'll talk to your sister in an effort to keep you controlled. This is what they want. And if they can get enough people putting pressure on you from a number of different angles, including themselves and your own guilt and your own lack of worthiness, because they've told you you were unworthy, so you must be. If they can do all that at the same time, then you will just collapse and do exactly what they say. Number nine, they tell everyone you're crazy. 
they will say, look, you know, she was a nice girl when I met her, but I don't know. She just went totally nuts. I don't know what happened to her. She's absolutely insane. They'll tell your friends. They'll tell their friends. They'll tell strangers. They'll tell relatives, but they'll tell people that you have some mental problems. I had a lady many, many, many years ago trying to gaslight me. And she went around telling everybody I was bipolar, as if that's there's something wrong with being bipolar. I think some great, great artists are bipolar, but I am not bipolar. I got so nervous. This was many years ago. So nervous. I went in and got diagnosed by two different doctors. And both doctors said, you are definitely not bipolar. You have a lot of other problems, but <laughs> you're not bipolar. Anyway, but I got gaslighted heavily to the point where I was uncertain of my own beliefs, of what I believed, of who I was. So here's what you need to do. Take a deep breath. First off, ah, breathing in that beautiful Ruach energy. Ruach means air, means holy air in the Kabbalah. Number one, fortify, fortify your inner world with meditation. You need time away from the gaslighter, away from this person, and you need to be in your own space. Uh, go walk to the park and sit next to a tree. Uh, have a room that you can lock and turn the lights off and, and just be quiet in. Have a spot in the backyard. Uh, take time off at work during lunch break, but you need to meditate and you start with breathing and you come to your center and then you reinforce who you are. Who am I? I am. That's that. See, that's why those I am affirmations strengthen your personal confidence and power and integrity. I am clear. I am honest. I am trustworthy. I am worthy. You see what I'm saying? You, you reinforce it from a positive angle, not from a negative angle. You don't say, I'm not insane. You say, I am grounded. I like the word grounded. I am grounded and confident and certain. I am grounded and confident and certain. Oh, that's a good one. I just came up with that. I like that. Hey, listen, try doing it. If you get a chance, try doing it barefooted on the grass or on some dirt and just say that affirmation. But basically, the message is to fortify your inner world with meditation. And if you practice TM or some other form of meditation, you know, that's fine too. That's wonderful. Two, never question your sanity or your core beliefs. Never. I don't care if you've got a thousand people around you. You know what your beliefs are. You know what your core values are. You know who you are deep down in the center of your heart. Okay. Behind your eyeballs or in the center of your heart, in the center of your soul, you know who you are. Do not ever question it. Number three, trust your judgment. Trust what you hear. Trust what you believe. Trust the choices that you make. Number four, never allow someone to use what you cherish, what you find valuable. That's one of their techniques. They'll take something you find valuable, your children, your relatives, your home, and they'll use it against you. Never allow someone to use. Well, you know, we could have a great relationship if you didn't have your little child. If you gave him to his father, then we could really focus on our relationship. See what I'm saying? That's gaslighting. And a lot of times people will do that. Well, we could have a great relationship if you would get rid of your kids, give them to their father, give them to their mother, and then you and I can go on. That's gaslighting. 
Don't allow that to happen. Value and protect what you cherish. You and I could have a great relationship if you would sell your home and we could use the money to travel. Again, you're being gaslighted. You get the idea? So you never allow that unless that's within your desires and goals previous to meeting this person. I would like to sell this home that I cherish. It's been in the family for a hundred years. I'd like to sell it and I would like to travel. Then it's you and that's okay. It's coming from your core, from your desires, from your intentions. You're not being gaslighted unless you're gaslighting yourself, I guess. Number five, seek professional. You don't hear me say this too often. Seek professional counseling. Somebody that is a professional. I'm not talking about a psychic, by the way, please. Psychics will gaslight you crazily. Okay, I mean that. Uh, I'm talking about a professional who understands gaslighting. And I would question them before I hired them. Do you have a good understanding of what gaslighting is, how to work with it? Because I'm in a deep uh, situation right now that, and I need help. You need someone else to talk to that has got a sane, clear, concise, honest, open, loving mind. Somebody that's going to see your value and help you magnify it. And number six, hit the road, Jack. Okay. Hit the road, Jack. Just move on. Oh, I, uh, but Robert, I love him. Hit the road, Jack. But Robert, I can't live without her. Hit the road, Jack. Sometimes you just need to say, no, I'm gone. Okay. Got it. Hey, listen, you deserve to have the money you desire the love that you crave and the health that you depend upon. You deserve to have an incredible life filled with love and happiness. No one deserves to go through this gaslighting. So if you're in this kind of situation, write me, let me know. We'd like to help out, but take action. I've given you six steps. Take some action and do it now. Have a great day because, well, because we love you. It's a beautiful day outside. We're breathing and we're soaring like eagles. Bye-bye now.